How's it going, Internet Land? This is Zachamus Prime, aka Zachamus Prime, I'm here with another Transformers third party review, and today is a treat. Uh, my buddy who runs Titan One Toys got in a from the TFCon that happened recently, he got in an advanced copy of the Maki Toys Howling Meteor, and this sucker is phenomenal. Like this is so cool. I'm getting ahead of myself. This is a great review. Oh, that's gonna be good. Ah. Okay, here we go. Yeah. So, um, a little bit of a personal note. Um, I haven't really been real big into this whole like, hey, we're gonna take the toys and we're gonna make them more look like they look just like right out of the show. It's gonna be great. And I've looked at them and be like, eh. I don't know. And uh, Takara's been doing that. And I've been looking at him going like, eh, I don't know. And uh, X Transbots has been doing that. And I'm like, uh, I don't know. And uh, even, gosh, just like a few companies have been doing that. And I'm just like, I don't know. I kind of like the, like, you know, the greeble and the detail and the, you know, the little convolutions built into it. I kind of like that. But for some reason, this figure just like, it speaks to me. It's like, really nice. I don't know if I'm gonna, I don't know if I'm gonna return this when I'm done with it. I may just be like, oh yeah, it, uh, it, 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 it got lost in the mail. Yeah, totally. Actually, I think that's my plan. That's my plan. In case anybody asks, if anybody asks, if, if, uh, if, if he asks any of you guys, just let him know that uh, yeah, totally uh, got lost in the mail. That that's the story. That's the story. Everybody, you're in on it. You're my accomplices. Whew. All right. So let's take a look at this guy. This guy is really really nice. Um, he nails the uh, the F15 mode really well. Um, not perfectly perfectly because there's this big chunk here and this big chunk here and a little chunk here. Um, but all in all, like. Like the cross section is much more sleek than uh, than the MP11. Um, I've got the uh, Japanese version, sorry, American version of MP11 right here, and you can see. First of all, they are straight up the same size, but yeah, like there's a lot of like this part here is fairly fairly slim for this figure, but like this part here is like super chunk. Um, and of course, on an actual F15, like all of this is not is completely non-existent. But um, on here, like it's not perfect. It, it does actually transform into a robot, so you have to make that consideration. But it just looks really good. Um, it does not have all of the like fun details that the MP11 have, like the air brake here and the ray dome here and the opening canopy here and the little cockpit seat there and the like engine details here and you know it doesn't have all that fun little details and that's one of the things that uh, that initially like really interested me about with with this figure back when it was still the mp3 was that this has some really cool real life details and this doesn't have as many but um I'm willing to uh, I'm willing to overlook that that grievance, and it still does kind of have a opening canopy. It just doesn't have anything inside to look at, so you'll just have to live with it, man. Have to live with it. Just deal with it. It does have little landing gears. Um, these landing gears blissfully are not a complete pain in the ass to get out. I'm looking at you. Complete pain in the ass to get out. Um, but they also don't roll. They're just one little piece of plastic with some paint on it. So, yeah. But, um, it doesn't have any way to, con it doesn't have, it does not come with a flight stand or any way to put it on a flight stand. You can get one of those, like, three, pl three prong, like, Macross stands if you really want to keep it in the jet mode, which you could, you totally could. But I really think it's a waste of the figure if you keep it in the jet mode. Because, and I'll just straight up point out, like, these jet modes are just as good as each other. They both look beautiful. They both look really, really nice. 
Um, in fact, I would say in some degrees, in many degrees, many respects, this one looks nicer in jet mode. Partially because, you know, the, the, the elevators are less likely to go wonky and the, um, I think that the, the, the flaps, the, the ailerons look a little nicer and it's got, you know, like the aforementioned, you know, real life details. And I think in jet mode, this actually looks a little better, just a bit. But this guy has got like the best robot mode ever. Like this is, this is a masterpiece style figure with that, that really has a lot of posability. Um, and I've been impressed with the figures where they, where they take, like, you can see where the design focus goes in some figures, like the, um, the Combaticons that I've been reviewing, um, you can really tell that the Zeta toys, they put all of their focus in the vehicle mode and not as much in the robot mode, but they also have a fair amount of detail in the like combined mode. Cause that's how it is. They're like, they're like. Vehicle mode first, and then since the, the combined mode is basically vehicle mode with a foot stuck on it, then, you know, vehicle mode and combined mode, and then robot mode kind of an afterthought almost. But this one, their focus was definitely on the robot mode, and more specifically, it was definitely on posability in the robot mode. We're going to get into that in a little bit. First of all, we've got to get it transformed up. And so... To start with this, well, I think the best place to start with is to take the, the null rays off. And we'll just, you know, shove those off to the side. Oh, by the way, I'll have to, I'll have to bring out the accessories in a little bit. There is a bag of accessories. It's upstairs. I'd have to grab it in a second, and I will. But it, um, I don't know, it like turns this into little missile launchers. And I think they look kind of silly, but that's just me. I think that really is just me that thinks it's kind of silly. And then they sit under the wing like little missiles, which is kind of silly because um, on the F-15, that's not where the missiles sit. Anyhow, that's me being a nerd. Let's get them transformed up. Yeah. So first thing you want to do is we want to unseat the wings. The wings are tabbed in and like here and here and here. In a couple like a bunch of places so just kind of like yank on it and pull up on it and there's there's a wing that's un unhinged so let's do that with the other side yank on that and pull on that and it's like it just does it himself it's amazing and so coming down here we're going to take these and fold these out to the side just to give us some more clearance we're going to pull this up and then we're gonna come around, split the legs, pull up on these cowlings here. And now the whole leg is gonna swing out like, like so. And there's actually a track in here. You can see this track, like really clearly, it's just in there. Let me focus again. Bam! You can see this track that's, that's in here that this mechanism slides back and forth on. And it's going to come up and it's going to kind of, kind of not really peg in there. Um, it pegs in the, in when it's folded up into jet mode, specifically, there's a couple of pegs in here that will plug into these slots on the upper thigh. Um, but now that this is in the out position, you can see here, this tab, this slot here is actually for this tab in the jet mode. And then this slot here is for the same tab in the robot mode. So let's get the foot out real quick. The foot is on this double joint and both of them click and it's, it's, it's kind of a trick, kind of a trick to get that out. Rotate the ankle a bit and that'll give you a good enough clearance to get the engine out. It just rotates out. Now we're going to take this and fold it in and, oh yeah, we're gonna slide this whole mechanism up. This whole thing goes in and this tab folds up. And now we're gonna take this and we're gonna tab it back in with this tab up front and then this slot 
fits into this tab here. So there is the tab. Come on, don't make a liar of me. It's trying to make a liar of me. Oh, what the heck? <laughs> it worked before, oh my gosh. <laughs> I know the pain of how like things, like you do them like a million times and they work just fine and then you turn on the camera and all of a sudden nothing works properly. That is a real thing, it is Murphy's Law. Come on, I did this like 10 minutes ago. There we go, jeez. All right, and then this part just folds over the back. And that's a leg. And now we're gonna go into the other leg. Yay! Pull that out. Yank this out. Put it into place. Slide that up. A fold, a fold. Pull the toe out. the heel. I've already got that part out, got that part out, got that part out. And we're just gonna chunk that into place. Hello. Chunk that into place. Chunk that into place. Come on. There we go. Perfect. Perfect. Yes. Loving it. Oh, <laughs> it was hidden from view, but that tab went in. And there's his legs. Basically done. This, um, there's two little pegs here on the skirt armor that fit into these slots here. So you're gonna untab that, just slide it down. Now we're getting into the upper torso. Everybody says that this is the hardest part and it really, I guess it's technically the hardest part, but it is not hard in and of itself. Um, there's just a there's just an order of operations and you gotta keep it in mind. Um, first thing we're gonna do is we're going to open these up right here. And these these are actually they tab into what becomes the upper arm and they help keep everything together. So you have to pull them out if you're gonna continue. These are gonna fold up and slide up. Now we're getting into the juicy bits. You're gonna take these parts here and you're gonna put them down and just point them down about as far as they'll go. We'll deal with them again later. And then we're gonna tree pose them. Then you're gonna take these and move them all the way out about as far as they'll go. These will turn up. And now we're gonna flip it over and we're gonna open up these things here. Now, this is a part where I like to differ from other people. You can technically like disengage this part here and be all like super, super gentle and careful with the fuselage and the nose cone and, and you know, get it all to go. But I'll be honest with you, it is absurdly hard to do. I actually have not yet seen anybody transform this without the nose cone falling off. So um, it may be just easiest, your mileage may vary, but I think the easiest way to do it is just you get to this point here and just feel free to pop the head out and just yank the whole damn thing off and it comes off. It literally just will pop off all on its own without any provocation. But if you want to provoke it, that's the way to do it. I provoked it. I like doing that. We're gonna take this and turn around. Here we go, this is my favorite noise. Ah, no, it's not. I lied. That's right guys, I lied to you all just now. <laughs> yeah. So we're gonna take this. I actually did this with my thumb while I was moving it. This part is gonna stick out here. We're gonna push that in. No, it was in already. We're gonna pull that out. I'm dumb. I didn't do that with my thumb. <laughs> We're gonna take this part here, this end of the cockpit, and that's gonna fold in. And 
and that is going to give us space for doing stuff. Come on. I swear to God, this worked earlier. Oh my God, I'm just a useless hack. All right, so that folded up and that clipped together and that whole thing just like works like magic. Now there's slots right here and right here and these tabs on the outside of his torso sections are going to tab into those slots. Like so. Bam, bam. These are gonna fit into slot, tab, bam, bam. Now these guys here are going to combine down. So you've got this part here is on the hinge in this bracket. That's going to collapse down fully. And there's his, um, there's his torso. It's really actually not that difficult. Um, for his nose cone, you just kind of take this and recess that fold everything all together and it will just sit on the back. Actually, it'll probably pop off again. There's this, there's a C clip right here and there's a little focus. There's a little thing in there and you're just going to put that in there and that's where that sits. Like I said, you can, if you're like super awesome, put that all together without that falling off, but I'm, I'm not that awesome and it's not uh, worth the effort to me. So these are just gonna tab in on the back and then slide down, tab in on the back, slide down. Tab in on the back right here, yes. And then the arms, you just yank on them. They'll extend all the way out. Extend the fist and turn it. Same with the other arm. Yank, extend, turn, reattach le nores. And last but not least, before I look stupid, this is the other arms fold up. Cause you know, somebody would be like, wow, Zach, you're stupid. Unsubscribe. Alrighty. And there he is in his robot mode. Let me adjust my camera because it needs to be adjusted. Let me move him back so we can see all of him at once. There he is and he just looks great. Like I am super loving this. But let's just do a quick just look around him. Now, I do believe that the reason why this nose cone comes off so easily is this is a design feature that you can take this. We actually saw at one of the conventions where he was being d shown. Somebody had taken that off and closed this up. And that, that helps clean up his, his 
you know, his back, his silhouette. If you want to look at your figure from the back, maybe if you've got him, you know, interacting with your um, Lord Despotron or something like that and want to have him, like, from the side or from the back, like, that's going to help, I think. And, I mean, you're not losing much. But, um, I don't know, he just, he just looks really good. Um... I don't know that I would say that he's absolutely perfect, but um, he is, he's nearly perfect. Um, in terms of, in terms of things that I wish that were a little bit better, and this is, this is not a big gripe, this is like digging. Um, this is a big one, kind of wish that his face was more silver, less like dark. Granted, this guy's face is also dark, so I'm kind of used to it. Um, I kind of liked the, the, the intakes tilting that the MP11 did. Kind of wish it did that. Um, the heels, heel stability is a big thing. Um, this guy does not have very good heel stability. I am thinking about, um, designing a part and just like putting it up on Shapeways or whatnot. That's just going to plug into here and give him like real real feet so that's that's something that i have um in the works already something that i'm working on but um just he just looks good from all sides let's get him side by side with with his his rival you can see that they both stand about the same um they're both you know very good masterpiece scale i mean this guy's the same size as this, so automatically he's, you know, good masterpiece scale. Um, but just what really impresses me about this is that you like you like look at this guy here, and like his shoulders are kind of down here, and then his like neck is all up here, and like this guy has a much more like solid. It's got a much more solid look to him. Like this guy here. That stupid thing my camera does did it again one of these days I'm gonna get a different one honey if you're listening if you're watching this video dropping the hints right right, right real big anyhow um like he's got some good he's got some good like detail and like surface detail and chunks on him like he's he's appealing to the eye but like in terms of proportions like this guy just works so much better you know you've got this like straight line across the shoulders and you've got like this real like sleek like this this has this has the the the, the proportions that you see in one of those like scf figures from the 90s you know and um and it works just really really well it's the sort of thing that you never suspected that you'd actually find a figure that does it, you know? And it just, it looks good all around. Like, like this guy here has got, I think his hands are a little bit better and I think his, his heels are a lot better. Um, but other than that, he's just, he's just, he's, he just, he doesn't feel as good. He doesn't look as good. He doesn't exude that masterpiece you know, vibe that you get from some of the other figures as well. Um, so let's get down to articulation. In terms of articulation, his head is on a ball joint and it looks left and right and all around. Um, his arms will go all the way out. They will go all the way up. They don't go all the way around because first of all, that's dumb. And second of all, there's wings in the way. He does have an upper bicep swivel that rotates the null rays with it. He does have double jointed arms, giving him like a really good degree range of motion on his elbows. The wrist swivel here. His fingers are the three together and the one by itself. Though I will tell you that like, <laughs> because of the way his finger works, like, 
this joint here doesn't extend all the way and this joint here extends kind of too much and then this joint here is like permanently so I joke about these guys having arthritic looking fingers this guy has like a super arthritic looking finger like he's like eh, Megatron I, I hope you die <laughs> very very janky looking fingers I don't know if that's the best uh, the best execution he does have this weird slot here in his here in his palm and um, when I first saw the prototypes for him the gray prototypes I noticed that and I was like huh I bet you he holds the weapons for the uh, the monkey toys like Striker Manus and uh, um, Striker Noor he does not um, this tab is is narrower than the tab that they use in all of their um, and all of that series their their strikers and their uh, despotron and the upcoming thunder erebus and manis and whatever else they're coming out with in that line it does not work it's a terrible shame i really wish it did because it would have been easy to make that gap just a little bit wider and then he could like hold, hold all these like sweet weapons like swords and pistols and big guns and little guns and machine guns and all sorts of stuff it would have been great by the way check it out he has a wrist a waist swivel it is pretty nice actually a little feels like it's a little bit of a soft detent in there um but he's got a freaking waist swivel like how cool is that i do like so this piece here is actually molded in clear plastic the same clear plastic that the, the clear orange that they use on this so that they can, you know, paint it silver from the back and have it shine through, and it matches that, and it looks like the cockpit all the way extends all the way down into his dick plate, but it doesn't. It doesn't. It's just an illusion. It's a completely separate piece, so you can still maintain that posability there, which is great. He's got these skirt armors. They all move out of the way. His leg will go forwards that much. His leg will go backwards that much. His leg will go outwards. Let me get his arm out of the way. Like that much, he'll do even beyond beyond the full Van Dam. Like Van Dam, you know. He uh, he does have an upper thigh swivel. Um, he's got technically a double joint, so he's got this joint here, which squeaks a bit, and this is a smooth joint. And then up above that, and that's a that's a joint here at this piece here. Up here, he has another one that is uh, ratcheted, and that allows him to get like a good degree of bend out of it. Like, like they were missing out by not having some sort of a stand attachment. I don't know. Maybe they could like make something. I don't know. I don't think that's deep enough to hold him. There's got to be some way to like make some sort of like a cradle or something that holds it from the back. That would actually probably be a really good way to do it. To have this guy in some sort of a, a robot mode aerial pose. Um, just because he poses so well. He's got this much bend on his ankle and no more. It's actually, it's actually stopped inside the uh, the ankle system there um, but you know like all in all like this is this is as much as you need like he's got like good articulation and he's got great posability and I just said the same thing twice um, I'm actually with the Department of the Redundancy Department so sue me but um like he will he will strike a pose like nobody's business and he'll like put up your no rays his wings go all like crazy and wild looking and and he will untab his wing somewhat <laughs> but he'll just like feel solid the whole time he's doing all this like he doesn't he doesn't feel janky he doesn't feel weird he doesn't feel like like something's about to give he he just he looks and he feels and he plays great 
and he's just a fantastic figure. Like, this guy is awesome. Like, if you... If you're interested in Starscream's and, and you're like... If you're fed up with your MP11 at all, or, God forbid, if you still have an MP3, like, it's time to upgrade. This is the upgrade. This is, this is as good as it gets. I mean... Gosh, I keep saying this about figures, but then later they come out with something better. I don't know. They may come out with something better in the future. I have no idea. They may, may they may come out with something like this, but it has, you know, better hands, better heels, and these move. <laughs> my nitpick. My one nitpick. Oh, it's so minor. But, um, like, if you are looking for something, if you're looking for a Starscream to grace your, your shelves, like, this is the way to do it. This is the guy to do it with. And um, I just, I can't even recommend him enough. Maki Toys has done a fantastic job. They've knocked it out of the park. Um, it is it is beautiful, articulate, elegant. It just looks great, feels great. Like this. Stick him in a wild pose like this and let's, let's see if we can get this guy to, to do something similar. Oh yeah, that's one thing. This guy does have booby missiles. That's uh that's a detail this guy has. You're never gonna you're never gonna surpass that, you know? Booby missiles. Yeah. Alright, here we go. Yeah. Come on. That clicky joint is still rather tight. Yeah. He's, he's, he's doing it, man. He's doing it. I take back everything I said. This figure is, is the best. He's, he's, yeah. He's awesome. Or, he is taking pre-orders for these right now. Like, contact him either on Facebook, eBay, or just straight up email him. And uh, you can put a pre-order in for this guy right now. Something to keep in mind. I don't know exactly how much he's gonna be, um, but I can tell you that MP11 currently is going for like 150 bucks. And I seriously doubt that this guy is going for that much. So right now, if you don't have a Starscream, the answer is so clear. If you do have a Starscream and you're looking to upgrade, you can probably sell your MP11 for the price that it would cost to get a new one. Like, this is the time. This is the time, this is the place. Everybody should go do that. I know I've got my pre-order is in the bag already. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just waiting now. But anyhow, everybody, you guys are awesome. Go ahead and leave me a comment and tell me how much I suck. Um, Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and give me a like, the old cheeky thumbs up. And uh, everybody be awesome and uh, be good to each other. By the way, I forgot, I completely forgot to mention his accessories. Let me yank his head off real quick. So in addition to his regular expression of expressionness, he does come with a couple extra faces he comes with his Starscream having a bad day slash aka his oh shit face and he also comes with his smirk face in case you know he thinks he's doing something clever which he rarely ever is but yeah he's even like kind of kind of winking you know like he's like yeah this is the face he uses to pick up chicks. Also, this is a, probably a good point time to point out that if you take the null ray off, you get just this part here, and you can attach onto this little thing here. And uh, again, I think it kind of looks silly. The regular null ray looks completely fine. I don't, I can't really imagine why you'd use the other one since this is what you would use for the robot mode and for the 
Airplane mode is accurate, screen accurate to both ends. I don't know. He also comes with this piece here, which has his face in the oh crap moment again with uh, the hand of Megatron clasped around his neck. And to use this, you just attach it onto there. Actually, it's probably better. So I don't have a Despotron, but I do have a Polyon. And um, I did learn that in a pinch, it actually kind of, kind of, kind of works. You just like chunk it on there real hard. And it like fits ish, ish, kind of. And then you stick it on there. And I don't know that this is going to be any easier if you have the Monkey Toys Despotron. But it's all kind of a hassle. And uh, yeah, you can totally have Starscream getting getting choked out. Um, <laughs> if it if it's if it's all true to form, like his neck is like atrociously long, and so it, it would look a little bit better if you like bring his hands up like that, like he's grasping. And um, that's uh, that's a good look for Starscream, to be perfectly honest. Um, like if I had a, a Despotron, which it's a really good figure, by the way. I've, I've, I've messed with one. I think it's pretty cool. But if I had one, like, this is one of the things that I would happily consider displaying him on my shelf for some time like that. Because even though I never liked Starscream as a kid, as I grew up, like, I came, I came to appreciate just what a wonderful uh, jerk he was. And, uh, yeah, there's actually some, some real, like, philosophical uses for him, too. And so I've grown to appreciate Starscream more. In fact, I would go so far as to say that he's my mm, second favorite Decepticon. I don't know. But um, now I really am. I really am. Th 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 that's all the accessories he came with. So 